Hey guys, so today I am going to share the story of the greatest villain in Magic the Gathering, and it is Mr. Jeremy. So he goes by different names now, uh, De Cordeling. Uh, before that, we used to do one hour live streams together, uh, and I've actually met him in person. Uh, he was a channel called MTG Headquarters. Then he removed the MTG because that was the reason that he became who he is today. So just like um, hero stories have origins, the villain story has an origin as well. Now, do I think Jeremy is a villain? No, but it doesn't take uh, it doesn't take very much. A simple Google search will show that he is not very much liked by social justice warriors, Kotaku, or even Twitter. And any time that they can, you know, any time they can take a shot at him, uh, they will take a shot at him. Um, same with Tolarian Community College, uh, Weds, as we're going to find out later, and other individuals in the Magic community. So Jeremy wasn't the quarterling until after Magic the Gathering. And what happened in Magic the Gathering, I think forever changed his life and how he views um, certain things. It begun by, so in Magic the Gathering, anyone can get a card to spoil as long as they suck up enough to the creators. I mean, there's this creator program where you apply. I, I never applied because I assumed I was never gonna get one anyway, kind of a waste of time. But any, somebody with 10 subscribers could get a rare or a mythic to spoil on their small channel. And the reason that you would want this is once you spoiled a card, um, you would have everyone and their grandmother go on your channel to look at the new card spoiled and they would have to reference you and so on and so forth. Um, there was a great debate about the value of it when people used to put their... Um, watermarks on the cards that were spoiled and that was pretty funny because then then all you saw on reddit was cards with watermarks on them and there was a big debate on if you remove the watermark or you don't remove the watermark and so on but these definitely had value um i would say that they would give give you anywhere between five to ten percent of your subscriber base would then you know go you would especially for any smaller channels it could literally 10x your small 10 10 or 100 so these were very valuable resources especially the rares and the mythics so jeremy got a uncommon i think a common uh, what happened was wizard of coast does not do their own marketing at the time uh, just very similar to how wizard coast has a corporate lawyer so they have one lawyer she is not the best lawyer that you could hire, in my opinion. I have interacted with her on many occasions, for a long extended occasion, actually. And when things get really tough, they outsource it to another law firm, a very big law firm here in Houston. That is the same thing with marketing. They you know, have Mero say some stuff, but at the end of the day, they're hiring an independent third-party vendor marketing agency and when the marketing agency goes and looks for people that they have to give one of their tasks during pre-release is to look for people to give the cards out to. So A for Revolt, uh, Jeremy was given a common and uncommon because the marketing agency not understanding that Wizard of the Coast hates Jeremy gave him the cards. So Jeremy doesn't know anything wrong. He's happy. He made a funny video about the cards and... I mean, everyone's happy when you have cards to spoil because, again, it really boosts up your numbers. So that's why Tolarian Community College still does it, even though supposedly he's independent. It is a carrot for people who always agree with Wizards of the Coast. Um, it does. It's not a carrot for being a hard worker. For a very long time, the Mana Source had he was given mythics to spoil. And these mythics were really chase mythics. Um, and instead of making a video, which I, they probably expected him to do, he would just tweet it. So that's a kind of a lazy way to do it. But uh, Jeremy, he went to make a video. He spent his time making the video. And the video got pretty good, for a, definitely for an uncommon common, that it did pretty well. So the video, of course, gets posted on Reddit. And it takes a turn for the 
worst, which is the majority of uh, content creators, whenever they're posting Reddit and their name's not Tolarian Community College or Wedge, uh, they'll get torn into real fast. And then Gavin Vehe, who still works at Wizard of Coast, he is a high level Wizard of Coast employee, leaves a comment. And this is the beginning, this is the reason, this is the end. And the comment basically suggests that they do not want they would they do not want or would ever want Jeremy to play magic. They are, you know, they're ashamed of Jeremy and they don't want to be associated with him and they just basically hate the dude. So imagine that you go to let's say like your favorite game store and the manager and you, I mean maybe you haven't spoken ever. And then one day, like in front of everybody in your play group, all F and M, a pre giant pre-release, uh, the manager out of the blue makes an announcement that, hey, this one dude right there, the, you guys see him right there. Uh, he sucks and we don't care and he's banned from my store forever. <laughs> I mean, what do you think the response would be from any, like, you know, they're going to be like, oh, well, I'd take it. Good idea. Um, no, no, Jeremy at this point has spent a lot of money on Magic the Gathering, a lot of money on Magic the Gathering, and rightfully so, he's a customer, yet you have a Wizard of Coast employee, Gavin, who is essentially saying that he is the scum of the earth, he's the worst person ever, and I would never want this game associated. So you have employees making decisions on who they want to play the game. That was not only the beginning of the end for Jeremy, that was the beginning of the end for an era in Magic the Gathering, where Magic the Gathering was about community and community building and local game stores and all that good things. Uh, today, it is about um, who does Wizards of the Coast and their protégés want to play this game. They want rich, non-binary individuals to play this game. That's essentially what it is. And occasionally... They will support Black Lives Matter and then hope and add more African-American, hopefully, employees to their staff. But that's why Jeremy is the way Jeremy is. Um, if you were treated in that manner, you would probably react in a very similar way. So nonetheless, it is all to say that it does make sense from a psychology perspective. Now, the Christine Sprankle thing, that didn't really make sense for me personally why he went after Christine because he should have gone after Gavin. Gavin was the originator, but at the same time, maybe, you know, Wizard of the Coast, um, and this was before he was really going after people. Maybe he thinks Wizard of the Coast is too strong. I don't know what, what was going on at that point, but... Um, the person he should have been angry at was Gavin, the person who called him out on that Reddit, which then it kind of spiraled out of control. Um, no one remembers the Gavin part. Uh, Wizard Coast certainly doesn't promote this a anymore, and they have kind of changed the narrative of the story into, oh, white cis male angry at a female magic player which is the storyline, but it really wasn't that. It was a white cis male who was angry at another white cis male. And I would argue that he had every right to. You're a customer and you spent tens of thousands, and then he spent a lot of money on Magic Online, which got refunded. He spent so much money, they uh, banned him for life. Um, they ripped him apart publicly. They humil humiliated him in front of everybody on Reddit. And that was the beginning. Um, the reason that Wizard Coast has not done that since is because there has been backlash against them. It's, they didn't get out of it completely clean, but um, Gavin is still working at the company. He's still a high-level executive, so it's not like very much changes at the top, right? If you cannot cut the head of the snake off, the snake is still a snake. And that's the same with the Black Lives Matter movement. That's the same with the cis male, what, whatever you want to say. I think all the problems stem from Meryl, Gavin, Aaron, and uh, what the other dude, Lee Sharp. Yep. Because they decide who they want to play the game. And if they don't want you to play the game, they will ban you for life. They will assassinate your character. They will cancel you out. They will call you out publicly. And that's why 
he's the villain. Because if, okay, let's say Christine Sprankles called him out. It wouldn't have been as bad. Gavin calling him out, that's Wizards of the Coast endorsing and attacking their own customers based on ideology or something. I have never seen that before. It would be like the CEO of Nike personally <laughs> rips on someone. It's like, uh, or a company executive, a high level company executive uh, rips on a, uh, a Nike athlete who's not performing as well as they you know, thought that they would do. It's just not even, and that's not even, that's actually they probably paid athlete. So in this case, it would be like a customer. It would be like a customer tweeted the Nike executive in frustration, hey, you know, I don't like these shoes. And a Nike executive says, okay, you're banned from buying these shoes. We're going to take all your Nike product that you own from your home away. And we're going to publicly embarrass and shame you in front of all of everybody. So, um, it is a very, um, it's, it's a very sticky situation, but at the same time, from a psychology perspective, it's so fascinating. Like, if you ever wanted to see how do you create a villain, this is how you create one. And it just kind of spiraled out of control, in my opinion. Um, I think a lot of the Cordling's videos are not, you know, I don't think he, I understand why you make them and views and so on and, yeah, algorithm, but I... I don't think that is Jeremy. Well, at least, at the very least, that wasn't the Jeremy I knew for many years. Anyway, hi guys.